Unless you're a member of the super wealthy or happens to be someone who purchased the right stock at the right time. Hello, early investors of Apple, Tesla, Google and others. I don't have any stocks, but earning interest on the money you save is becoming something of a challenge. Personal saving accounts are a joke right now because interest rates are particularly low. And even those who have access to things like bonds are finding that the yields are so low that they're unlikely to get much for their investment beyond basic inflation. But there's one thing that you can do to earn $10,500 over 15 years that seems less risky than dabbling in the stock market, easier than shopping for good personal savings rates, and is good for the community around you because it improves the air quality. Buying an electric car. That is, according to a new report from researchers at the US Department of Energy Labs. They took data from the current costs for electricity across the US and examined the fueling costs of battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles when compared to the traditional internal combustion engine one. Their findings, published in the journal Juul for the July edition, show that in all but one US state, more on that later on, you can stand to save a significant amount of money by owning an electric vehicle. In fact, the study concludes, you can stand to save as much as 10 and a half thousand US dollars in 15 years of battery electric vehicle ownership on average when compared to owning and operating a petrol or diesel powered car. If you've been on the electric car bandwagon for a while, that will certainly come as no surprise, especially if you live somewhere with low cost electricity or happen to have photovoltaic solar panels on your home that are already paid for and are used to charge your car. But where this study comes into its own is the level of granularity that it goes into and the adjustments made for real world electric vehicle ownership, you know, rather than the hypotheticals that all too often ignore the impact of DC quick charging on overall fueling costs. It examines gasoline and diesel prices in all 50 states, plus the average cost of electricity in the same. It then examines the total fuel costs for customers based on the levelized costs of charging or LCOC, which take into consideration the average ratio of home and work base level 2 charging against DC quick charging. It also takes into consideration any time of use or TOU rates available in each area. Time of use rates are offered by electricity companies as a great way of encouraging customers to use more electricity at night and less electricity during the day. TOU rates are often far lower than regular daytime rates and can result in significant savings for electric vehicle refueling costs. In addition to charging costs, the study, using data from last year, shows that battery electric vehicle owners are more likely to install a dedicated level 2 home charging station. 84% of EV owners who charge at home do this, compared to about half of plug-in hybrid owners. And that those with battery electric vehicles, on average, rely on rapid charging stations for around 5% of all of their charging needs. As to plug-in hybrid owners, well, they're often given a bad reputation for not having an all-electric vehicle, but the data from NREL shows that 76% of all journeys are carried out in electric-only mode, something it's calling utility factor. Only plug-in hybrids with ranges of less than 25 miles per charge have a lower utility factor, but it's still around 53% of all trips. I don't have time to go into depth of all of these in-use case scenarios in the video, but the report is pretty methodical and goes into a varied set of scenarios from using a level one granny lead charger at home to using a charging station at work. It also examines the capital costs of workplace and public charging, i.e. how much it costs to install and maintain the charging station as a factor of the cost to the end user. You might think that the highest savings of owning an electric vehicle would naturally occur in states with the lowest electricity costs. But because this study compared projected electric vehicle costs over 15 years with projected costs for gasoline on a state-by-state -state basis, the states where the biggest savings can be made are sometimes ones with not the cheapest electricity prices, but the most expensive petrol prices. 
The ultimate outcome? If you live in Washington state, you will benefit from the nation's largest difference in fueling costs. For example, if you buy an electric vehicle in the Evergreen state, you stand to save almost $14,500 over 15 years, far better than the national average. Even if you just have a plug-in hybrid in Washington state, you'll still save $12,400 over the 15 years of ownership. Savings vary from state to state, but the only state we all stand to be worst off buying an electric vehicle is Hawaii, where you'll end up spending nearly two and a half thousand dollars more to fuel over 15 years compared to a petrol car. That's down to Hawaii's high electricity cost, which is caused by the fact that oil-filed power stations still provide a significant proportion of Hawaii's grid power mix, although that's reducing. But that oil requires shipping across the Pacific in order to be burned. The most expensive state for plug-in hybrid owners? That's Alabama of all places, where you only stand to save $2,368 over 15 years of plug-in hybrid ownership. Now, I've tackled the bare rudiments of the study, but you should really read it if you're interested. I'm going to tackle the headline bit, though, which I'm going to concede in my part is clickbait. But as I noted at the start of this piece, investment returns are pretty poor these days unless you're really good at playing the stock market. In fact, the only people who really are benefiting from poor interest rates right now are the super rich, those one percenters who are putting stupidly large amounts of money into various investment portfolios that are predicted to lose the money in the long term, but which ultimately will result in them paying little to no taxes as a consequence because they'll have lost money on it. Saving $10,500 or more over 15 years of electric vehicle ownership equates to around $700 per year, or about $60 a month. And yes, while I know I said savings rates are pretty poor right now, and that this was a better way of saving money, if you took that $700 average saved in fuel costs every year, and then put that into a savings account with the paltry 1.3% that most places are offering today, well, after 15 years, you'll have nearly $12,400. While that's only $1,160 more than you're going to save by driving an electric car, that's not a bad extra bonus for driving electric, now is it? That's it for today's video. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this one, please do like, comment and subscribe, and you can support us using the links below, which now include Ko-fi, Patreon, and Bitcoin. Don't forget, too, that you can chat with the rest of the team on Discord, there's also a link below for that. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get access to our special Patreon-only Discord chats. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks also go to Jeffrey Songster, John Lyons and Regine Fellows, who are our $50 a month self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our $100 a month Starman patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea. If you're looking for something else to watch from the channel, then Google's AI thinks you probably need to watch this video. If you haven't, watch it. And if you have, well, maybe you can watch it again. And I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe, stay cool, and work to become a better kind of person, strive for equality, and treat others as you'd like to be treated yourself. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, keep evolving!